No, no, I'll send it out to you first, and you can uh, you can say I don't want that part. I'll, I can edit it out. <clears throat> and Mike, I, I want to tell you again how much I enjoyed that uh, uh, bit, bit about the beaches in Oregon. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't Anybody else look at that? Yeah, we yeah we Paulette and I saw that uh, the other night. Chris, you know we, I was a I was a five year student with Bacon, and we were we were part of his group that we we spent uh, several weeks at the beach researching uh, data for the for taxes uh, because oh, yeah. one of the arguments that uh, that was being made was that they were being taxed the owners were being taxed on the beachfront. And exactly. that was never true. They were never taxed on the beachfront whatsoever. Oh, okay. Wow. So your parents were okay with it, huh? <clears throat> I mean, Gary's. Yeah, well, uh, by the time that was coming around, my dad had died, because he oh. died when, he died uh, uh, the year I started high school. But oh. my mom had, my mom, they, we had that cabin down there since, they had it since the 30s before I was born. I had three older sisters. Uh, they. They used to rent the cottage down at the, by, just across from where the creek was at that north end of the beach. Yeah. And, uh, uh, when the people that owned it wanted to sell it, they offered it to my dad and he purchased it. So they owned that cottage since the 1930s, someplace in there. And uh, I mean, they told stories about driving around Hug Point. Uh, so. Uh, Did some of us go there? One time? I, yeah, we we had a couple of times I think where we had people come down there, had some parties. Uh huh. Uh, there was some of us that rode bikes, and I don't know if we made it as far as your uh, folks' cabin or not. Yeah. Yeah, and it was right at the north end of Cannon Beach, uh, where the uh, you know the, 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 there's a creek that came down, Elk Creek came down from the mountains and and came into the the beach and went up to the ocean. The mouth of the creek was up. Uh, Around kind of a bend where uh, it where you could see Haystack Rock from the mouth of the creek. Uh. But uh, yeah, my mom moved down there full time about the time I graduated medical school. Oh, okay. Because before that, we lived out in Damascus, you know, east of uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. So, anybody else know that this was going on with Bob and also uh, Lynn? Uh, the I didn't. Bob I didn't realize it. Boy, what a neat guy. Yeah. Uh, two things I remember <clears throat> with him is that he agreed to give a presentation and I forgot what it was to whoever would want to come to that lecture room. It was in the evening and we got about five people and we were all embarrassed. And anybody uh, remember that thing? He, he had this nice subject that he was an expert on and he, he agreed to come and talk with us. No, I don't remember. That. You all missed it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, are we the only ones that know how to use this com uh, computer? Yeah, you point and do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on a little bit of a timeline tonight. Uh, so uh, my idea is, of, you know, I think it's nice. I, I think it's a great idea to have a reunion i'm just not you know i'm just so deep in this covid shit that i don't know that you know i can tell you i can tell you that june is not going to be good no maybe july yeah maybe if we're lucky yeah if we're very lucky yeah um and uh so just like so many other things we had planned this year we may have to put them on a on a hold, but we could start planning. But I don't, I don't think we could ever secure. Right now, uh, we'll never, we'll not be able to secure a place to have it. No, because nobody's going to be committing. I just talked to Casey a couple nights ago, Casey Blit. Yeah, and uh, you know he was willing to put it on. He and his wife have been putting on reunions for their Vietnam hospital uh, yeah. people every two years, Pretty, you know, with fifty people or so. So he's been putting on meetings. And he was, he, when I talked to him, he was thinking we probably couldn't have it before 21. And if we weren't going to have it before then, maybe it wouldn't make much difference to wait till 22. Yeah. But every year is a year, you know. <laughs> yeah. And every a, year we'll lose more people. 
That is a problem. I even heard it talk today about it being 18 months before we get back. So really? I kind of yeah, shut it out. Yeah, it's definitely going to be 18 months before they get a vaccine. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to go into a flattening. We're going to have a little bump here in the Portland area. Um, we're going to go into our surge probably in two to three weeks. And then by May 10th, we should be, it may flatten out. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's if everybody keeps staying at home. And of course, now everyone is going crazy at home. You should see the number of calls that are coming in uh, to our uh, dispatch center for domestic issues. I mean, oh, yeah. People are hitting each other. They're yelling. They're screaming. They're they're taking stuff away. They're doing all sorts of typical stuff when you get people locked in together. Well, the net, domestic violence is bad enough as it is, but lock exactly. them in so they can't get out. Uh, yeah. So I uh, saw that the alcoholic uh, industry was doing better. Well, alcoholic doing well. Industry. It always yeah, does well. well that's people what, aren't well, always staying home. We, their should, their yeah. drunk too. we should have put our money in that. You know. Yeah. Um, at any rate, uh, the it uh, uh, looks like uh, there's going to be another one. It'll settle down for the summer a little bit, but it's going to be a constant noise. And then there'll be another peak in um, uh, October, November. Yeah. Wow. Well, it just keeps going on. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. I think we should plan a reunion online to get people uh, <laughs> ready to use Zoom and have uh, some kind of program we spend maybe just an hour together yeah, yeah that's and then uh i think maybe we should reunite it maybe in um or plan on uh, and you have to, you'll have to train people how to turn on the computer um but maybe have a have a meeting uh in in april or or in may when when we see what's really coming along we could probably you know, if, if everything really went wonderfully well, hi there. <laughs> this is Carol. Hi. hi. Hello, I'm Carol. Hi, Carol. Yeah. Lynn Whitworth. Good to see all these wonderful guys. Gary, Gary Dahl and Gary Eberly. All right. Good. I won't interrupt. If, if, if everything goes well and, and things are looking good in May, we could maybe think about something. But, I, you know, I just want to be... I think it's cautious. We could, we we could never secure a venue now. We could never get even Casey to get something put yeah. together because it's it's too much up in the air. We're going to know a lot more in two months. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I think that's a reasonable thing. At least a month or two. Yeah, to yeah. think about it then. Yeah, because it's just we don't know what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. You guys sure. remember remember when we were in medical school and they told us all about the flu in nineteen eighteen? Yeah. Yeah. Parkinson's disease because yeah, of it. Exactly. I know that was. Did anybody ever think that was going to happen again? <clears throat> no. Uh, I've laughed about that ever since, as as many of my friends have come down with uh, Parkinson's disease. So. Yeah. Did they have the flu? No. No. <laughs> but maybe no, there was, are there are our age people. Was that was that one of the other things they told us that wasn't true? Yeah, one of the many things, you know, like <laughs> no, it's going around, it'll go away. <laughs> yeah, right. So there's there is no link between the flu and the Parkinson's? No. I, oh there isn't. Wow. Not. Okay. No. See we we all were we all were fooled into that one. Wow. Yeah. And actually, and of course, it's even worse is because it were, wasn't even a Spanish flu. Uh -huh. Started in Kansas. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And went with, went with know, the, the, one, the one true thing that they told us was that smoking had something to do with lung cancer. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> even though they all still smoked. Yeah. 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 And Dr. Weinsroll's wife would always tell us she had she got another tattoo and that was also true that was also true <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> oh who who started the campaign to vote him teacher of the year that was <laughs> that really backfired uh, on our I have no idea <laughs> <laughs> well but i still to this day remember the difference between a uh, a Norway rat turd and a common ordinary rat turd. Wow. <laughs> I must have missed that. <laughs> I missed that one. I thought Kathy must that have was, 
That was public health in, in 1963, 64. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kathy was the only one in the room taking notes, at least in one of Dave Hooper's pictures. So you must have yeah. got her notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to sign off because I have uh, to go off and do another thing. Okay. Well, thanks for joining in, Lynn. Well, thank you. Thank Say hello you. to Paulette. Yeah. See if I can get my thing to get myself out of here. There we go. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now, this, this is the first time I've actually used this, so it really works. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we've switched over the past month to all our meetings in the hospital and out and so forth to Zoom. Uh -huh. So handy. Yeah. So um, there's there were complaints about people uh, getting in on it that weren't yeah. supposed to. Yeah. And but you can you as the administrator you can make it so they can't. You can lock it in so that nobody can come in except people that are invited. Yeah. yeah. You can make settings. Yeah. So I had my my uh, twenty my I have a twenty one year old who just had a birthday. Oh really? And he had twenty five people online via Zoom uh -huh. at his <laughs> event. So, is, there, is there a limit to how many can be on at once? I don't think so. It's just the size of the pictures. But okay. yeah, I think you know, it would be pretty easy to have 20, you know. Certainly they do it for a lot of these exercise classes too, with 10 or 20 people, 30 yeah. people online. Because they can't go into the classes. So that's sure. why they're doing sure. it. So my license limits me to 100, I think. Oh, connection yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have to, get a to be the to be the administrator. I mean, in other words, if I don't have a license, I just have the app. I, I can I invite somebody to to join me in Zoom. Yes. Um, if you do the free license, you can have uh, unlimited time one to one with somebody, or uh, forty minutes with up to a hundred people, and. Uh, up until recently, then they would shut you down, but you could always just restart. So right. you know, minor inconvenience. But today, a group here did it, and um, Zoom did not shut them down at 40 minutes. I think they were, you know, gesturing um, support for people, which was nice of them. <clears throat> uh <-huh. clears throat> okay. Well, Gary, what what are your? I, I mean, uh, you know, like doll. Be careful. There are two Garys here. Yeah. Which. What what are what are your uh, your what is your focus there at work now? Oh, mine or yeah. his? Yours, yeah. I know what Gary does. So I'm a pediatric oncologist. Yeah. So I design protocols and treat patients, kids with cancer, and work yeah. on immunotherapy and all kinds of uh, things and global health also. Uh huh. Uh huh. So how do, you, how do you keep your optimism um, treating with uh, kids with um, life-threatening illness? Or do you get energy? Well, out? it's been improving every year. And when I started, we cured 10% of kids with leukemia. Now we cure 90%. So well, that's an upper. Yeah. So now we're focusing on the small population of bad patients and trying uh -huh. to focus on the genetic therapies you can use in those but my gosh the amount of information we used to have which i thought was a lot has expanded so much yeah. whoa different language yeah, I'll bet. I yeah. couldn't understand what you were saying. how about brain huh? and things of that nature are you doing that too yeah neuro-oncology okay. yeah i actually started that program here about 15 years ago, the only people that took care of brain tumors were neurosurgeons who, as we know, they don't know anything they about brain tumors. Very good results. <laughs> yeah. And so, and we used to have these tumor boards where we'd bring the big, uh, you know, 16 different uh, slide frames in and show, and now it's so much easier. But, uh, and anyhow, now we have some effect with the chemotherapy and radiation and specific treatments, but there's still a long way to go, obviously. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. So what's, what's your relationship with the drug industry? How do you face those people when you know they are, well, I can't find a word for it. Um, they are taking advantage of us in, in such oh, a- Oh, the cost. Yeah, the cost of things is just phenomenal, but it's new agents we're looking at. And I don't really, you know, I mean, even one of those, uh, our uh, new immunotherapy stem cell transplant, CAR T treat, costs, uh, um, you know, a million dollars. And uh, and I, I did learn that there there's no such thing as cost, it's charge. I see, right, exactly. There is no cost. Right. The charge magic. And, and then the magic therapy that we have, like for chronic myelocytic leukemia, this dasatinib or Gleevec, it costs $750 a pill every day for the rest of your life. Wow. How in the hell can you do that? Anyway. Well, that's the charge for it. That's not what they pay. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Have you, have you guys had had, had any uh, doctor's visits on your Medicare, and or any kind of treatments on Medicare? We on do, yeah, Medi-Cal. We do fifty percent no, of our patients have no insurance. So. No, I mean, for yourself, have you gone to the doctor? No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't figured that out. Have you? Well, you know, it's very interesting. I I have Medicare, and then I have a Medicare supplement. Okay, I, I go I go have something done, and uh, say it's uh, in the office, an office visit or something like that, ophthalmology or whatever, and there's they get this I get this I'm not sure I understand I get this big bill, and uh, the the Medicare either approves it or doesn't approve it. If they approve part of it, and they pay part of it, then Cigna, my backup one, supplement pays the rest of it. But if Medicare doesn't approve any of it and doesn't pay any of it, Cigna doesn't pay any of it, and they tell me I don't need to pay any of it either. I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, I, we, I don't understand healthcare at all. <laughs> so speaking about when do you um, decide whether to treat that child or not, or this 90-year-old man or woman, um, do you get pulled into the ethics committee meetings, Gary Dahl, sometimes about these things? Oh yeah, no, I, but not, not, I mean, I, I make a lot of these decisions myself. I don't really need ethics very often, but uh -huh. when I do, I find it very helpful that you yeah. can, can utilize a group of people to make certain decisions about it. But I, the thing about pediatrics is we, it's, paid for you know almost everything no matter what oh. so it isn't you know and uh of course with obamacare went up to 26 but now uh we'll see what happens so uh how how does that happen uh, through medi-cal that everybody yeah the children? okay <laughs> yeah but that's um how do people in Medi-Cal make a decision? I mean, one, one serious illness could almost break the bank um, for funds. I mean, somebody has to make those decisions in Medi-Cal. Oh, state, state of California, yeah. yeah. So we pay, you know, depending on if you uh, make it by registration and so forth, certainly, uh, some aliens who come in from other countries, uh, it, it's not, a, a, you know, as straightforward, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I worry about how much we're focused on innovative therapies that can break the bank and yeah. kind of to the detriment of teaching people how to take care of their diabetes and uh, hypertension, you know. Yeah. yeah, undervaluing uh, primary care <clears throat> um, because it's not as sexy as the latest uh, thing that ends in dash MAB or MIB. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And then all the advertising 
of MIBs that end with ask your doctor if this is right for you. This is just insane. That's for sure. I'm glad I'm not on the front line uh, of asking, having taking care of primary care patients with all the ads that are on there. Uh, they must get inundated with patients asking them for this drug and that drug that they've heard yeah. about on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of TV, uh, I don't understand how lawyers can sue people for bleeding if they take a, an anticoagulant that's already told them that they might bleed. You know, how can they sue successfully for that stuff? Because <laughs> you're a lawyer, you can do anything. How can they get paid? Uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, you read the ad for, mm. for, for Eloquus, and it tells you right up front you could die from bleeding. But if you die from bleeding you're, 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 or have any kind of a complication bleeding-wise, you can call your lawyer and get money for it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that's what they say. No, is that they a say, if, you have ever, if you've ever taken one of these drugs and have a problem, call us. Oh, is that a separate ad like we see for mesothelioma? That kind of a... It's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's see, an attorney ad. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 If you've ever taken this drug and never had any kind of a problem, uh, we can get money for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did I tell you, Gary, Gary Dahl, one time you were driving north from the Bay Area and I was driving south to Southern California and we were near the Siskiyou Pass and I saw your face in the windshield as it went by. I think you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were having, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I was drifting off. Extra century perception or. I was pretty sure it was you. Or spiritual. Yeah. Um, we saw a program on polio last night also on public television. Um, our, and uh, we were talking about that maybe before you became on, Gary Dahl, about the Oregon Beach Bill. Or did, or did we, were you part of that? Discussion. Yeah, no, I, I saw I, I I saw in the email that and I pulled it up, but I haven't looked at it. Oh, yet. okay. So there's there's Bob Bacon out there um, in the middle of that, and I never knew that um, that he was doing that at the time. Yeah, I didn't either. Oh. So, oh yeah, one of my experience with Bob Robert Bacon. Um, I remember that talk that nobody came to, and I also remember my histology exam with him. He was so kind and he, was, he did it in such a diplomatic way to tell me that wasn't endometrial, um, it was thyroid. <laughs> <laughs> they probably look about the same, right? Yeah, well, I thought so. <laughs> I can remember that corner, that corner lab or where we used to look at things under the microscope. Yeah, yeah. that's that where- Out over the- the out over the city yeah yes that's where dan and mary bonded because we were lined up alphabetically yeah yeah they were right next to each other and that's also where i looked out the window in november of two, 1963 and saw people walking very slowly and shaking their heads yeah right. that was where we were when that happened. that's right and it was one of the lab assistant that came in and announced it uh, one of uh Whoever it was, we couldn't believe. Yeah. Like talking about JFK? Yeah. I was in the library at the time. I must have had a different lab time. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't go to play basketball with us then after No, that. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, um, what else? Can we think of getting more people involved in doing this in a Few months again. I don't know. You sent you sent your email out to everybody, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. And I saw Dayton uh, Misfell yesterday. I oh, I didn't. I don't think he was on my list. I don't know. Yeah, if I think he was. Well, I think he was. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I. But think I think he didn't want to hear about single pay, single payer health care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Well, I, you know, all I can say is maybe you should send out another email telling people how, uh, what a good time it was for us to discuss things with each other and give, reminisce a little bit and yeah. talk about the possibilities of the future. And 
and maybe uh, see if we can get more interested in having more people uh, come online. Yeah, okay. find if there's a good time. That would yeah. be okay. Yeah. 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 Now, most, most of them, most of them aren't that busy. I don't think. Exactly. No, no. not not as busy. I'm, I'm not busy at all during the day. I'm only busy at night when there are certain TV programs on. <laughs> well, I'll put this on a YouTube link, and send that along, and invite people to uh, say when they would want to meet uh, next time. Could be a month from now. Yeah. So, and, Mike, where 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 do you live? In Corvallis. Um, and Gary, we're, we're Rockford, Illinois. I'm two years, uh, two hours behind you. It's eight thirty my time. Uh, okay. Uh. So don't have one at ten thirty at night. I probably won't be up. <laughs> okay. So what would be the latest for you that we should do this for a Pacific time? <laughs> well, I, I'm uh, I'm usually up till ten or eleven anyway. So if we said until eight o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you did it up till eight o'clock, I could do it. Okay. All right. Good. Well, it's sure fun to see your faces, hear your voices, yeah. and absorb your wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't express any wisdom. Did I? No, I, I can just feel it pouring across the screen. Yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. all right. All right. So, well, thank you for organizing this. I'm glad. Except we do need to find a time where we can yeah. get together. Yeah. And every five years is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you. <clears throat> my mom attended her 70th reunion at Oregon State. Um, this was probably in the mid 90s. <clears throat> and four members of the class of 28 were there. And um, Dan Poling stood up and he was the president of the class. Uh -huh. He said, we will plan our next meeting as first order of business. We'll plan our next meeting in five years. So, <laughs> but we will not choose the place. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so we can say, we can say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -oh. no, I think it should be sooner than five years for sure. I, I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd vote for later this year or next year. Yeah, I agree. Probably, probably, probably have to wait till next year sometime. Yeah, but we can meet online in a month if people want to. Yeah. Um, maybe um, if you wouldn't mind, if you are each on that call, um, pick a topic just like we used to that you could let us know about in say ten minutes. What's the, what's the latest in childhood uh, cancer treatment? What's the latest in anesthesiology? All right, sounds good. Like thinking about things. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right. Thank. Thanks Thank for you. trying to pull us together. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> okay. Good night. Right. Good, Good night. night. Good night.